Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today, we're going to look at indices and unique constraints in Pocketbase. So I got this request from a user, so I just want to cover it really quickly. All right. So let's think about um, the relationship between the collections or tables that we have. And I'm going to start by talking about uniqueness first, and then I'll talk about indices. Um, let's just let's focus on the user table for now. And so imagine that we had um, three users registered, user one, two, and user five. Those are our three users. Notice they have different username and different email addresses, which makes sense. So we're going to assume that these are different people. Now imagine that we had a fourth user register, and that's going to be a user who called themselves user two. They give themselves the same username, user two. And they use a very different email address, user six at email.com. So what is the problem here? Well, if you look at the fourth record, you'll see that even though the ID is different because we're going to give different IDs, the username is the same as another user for the record two. So why is this a problem? Well, for the simple fact that we have two different users with the same username, and we use username as a way to log in. When we go to log in, which one of these users should really be authenticated? Are we authenticated with if we were to use username for login? And we know that we can use username because the API for Pocketbase allows us to do that. Um, sure, we could use email and that would be different, but still, because we can use username, we have to be able to make sure that we don't have two different users with the same username or else it's going to be a problem. So in this case, we want username to be unique. And so what does uniqueness mean? Well, if something is unique, there's only one and only one of it. And if it's not unique, then there could be more than one of it. And so we want our username column to only have unique values. Similarly, we want our email columns to only have unique values. And so we'll talk a little about how you create it, but at least we want to understand um, what is the problem. As another example, let's say we had a fifth user who um, registered, and they use a different username. So this time they use username seven, so no problem. But then their email address what they use is user one at email.com. Maybe it is the same person who is user one registering again, but still we have the same issue. Like sure, they can authenticate that it's a user one or user seven, but look at the email, the email is, is different, is the same. So we don't want that. So again, in this case, we would want to say that our email column or our value stored in that field they are unique. And so we can easily do this in pocket base. And we're going to see how to do that from the UI. So that's what uniqueness is. Now there's a different type of uniqueness. And for to understand that, let's look at our tables again and the relationship between them. And so this time I want to focus on cart items. Now, when you're looking at cart items, if you look at um, any one row, it doesn't seem to be a problem. Like, so there's a record, record one, and it belonged to cart one, and um, it's linking, you know, item two into this cart, and there are three item, three of these items, you know, a quantity of three of these items, no problem. And then record two, um, something, a different item, and so on. Well, what if, what if we try to insert a different row and we say it's going to cart, it's using cart one, and the item is again 11, and we use a different quantity. What is the problem there? Well, on the surface, it doesn't seem like there's a problem, but why should we allow the combination of cart and item, multiple cart and item? So instead of adding another entry that says cart one, item one, with four things, we should just simply say, let's increase this record to be 13, because if we have four more item of item 11 added to the same cart, well, it just increase the quantity. 
So in this case, what we want is not a uniqueness in the cart field, because as you can see, there can be multiple um, records with the same cart. And similarly, we don't want a uniqueness on the item because there could be another cart, like maybe cart two, that have item two, for example. So we don't want that. What we want is the uniqueness to be expressed across these two fields. So we can have uniqueness on one field and even multiple fields in the same collection or table, or we can have uniqueness being expressed across multiple fields. And so in, this is an example where you'd want to create a uniqueness between with using these two fields. All right, so that's uniqueness. And I don't think that's too hard to understand. Now, the next thing is index. So let's move on to index. So here I have an index, and this is from some book. It doesn't matter what, which book, that's not the point here. What I want to show is that you already know what an index is. So we can see under B that, let's say battery, the word battery appears on page nine and 38. Similarly, if we look for, let's say, date and time under D, we'll see things about date and time appear on page eight. So what is the index doing? Well, it is allowing us to find things of interest quickly. So if you want to know where they talk about battery in this book, you would first go to the index, look um, look up battery here, see that's in page nine and 38, jump to page nine, look for battery, at least it'll take you much closer than if you had to start from the page one and start looking for battery. And then you can just look on page nine, you find battery, and is that what you really wanna know about battery? If not, then go to page 38, see what else they say about battery on page 38. Now think about it, if we didn't have an index, we'll have to start from page one and then we wouldn't find the word battery we're looking for until we get to page nine. Then if we had to keep looking, we won't find battery again until we get to page 38. And then we'll keep searching the rest of the book. Let's say this book is, you know, a hundred pages. We won't find battery again. So the index tells us exactly where to look and where not to look. So that's what a, the index is doing, allowing you to do faster lookups. So when we use an index and database, it's essentially the same thing. We're creating an index as the, of the data as we insert it on the column of interest. I'll get back to that. So we're going to say, I have a record or a row, and there are these fields or columns that I need people to be able to find things fast, or I'm gonna be using in query, or I expect people to use in queries often. And so let's create index with those fields or the data in those fields so we can find a record faster. So now that we have an idea, what's the purpose of an index to be able to find information quickly in our database, let's go take a look at how we create index in Pocketbase. As usual, I have my Pocketbase running. I've already logged in. And what I'm gonna do is go make a quick backup of my data as it is right now. So I just create a backup. Then go back to collection. So the way you do index and unique in database is that you can create an index, which we know helps you find information fast. And then you can create a unique index, which is a way to say, well, hey, the information in this column or this set of columns should be unique. We covered that already, but it's still an index. You have to be able to, if you're going to create a unique index, or you want uniqueness in your field, you need a way to be able to look up things quickly so that you can return that, oh, this data is already there. And it makes sense that you'd want an index. So there are really two types of indexes you can create, right? Just a regular index to say, find information quickly. And a unique index to say, yes, I can find things quickly to say that, oh, it's already there or it's not there, so I can tell you whether or not to be able to create it. Does that make sense? Right, remember, if we're doing a unique index, we want to make sure that there's only record of that one matching that one set of constraints, whether it's on one field or it's on a combination of fields. So let's take users, for example. Let's just start with it. So I want to create a unique index on username. I want to create a unique index on email, not the combination of the two, but on each one. So how would I do that? Let's go here to edit collection. And you can see there are no um, constraints defined yet. So I click new and notice like I said, 
we can just simply create an index or we can create a unit index. So for user, we want to create a unit index. So I'll toggle this and notice how does it change it? It just says create unique index instead of just create index and ignore the name. This could be any crazy thing. Um, and Pocketbase is suggested name for us, so we shouldn't change that. Now we can click the fields we want to be in our index, but notice Pocketbase did not show us this all the fields in our collection. And so missing from this is username and email. So I'll put username. So I want to create a unique index with its crazy name, ID, PG, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to say set index. But notice I can create another index and this time it's going to be also a unique index. But this time this is going to be specifically for the email um, field. And I'm going to say set index. And so now I have two indices unconstrained defined. One is a unique index on username and another one is um, unique index on email. And so let's click on this and let's click delete. And now you notice I can easily add and remove indexes. So let's create back our one on email and set index. And now I say save. And let's go try um, creating another user. And so if we click here, we don't have to do this from the endpoint, like it doesn't really matter. And so we say we want a user with the same name, Veril, and let's just use a different email address. So we'll say the email address is going to be uh, user10 at example.com. Um, or maybe let me just call it Veril10, for example make it easy at example.com. So we know that the email is different. The only thing is the username. And so let's give the password. So we'll give it, you know, very that secure, very that secure. And please don't use that. And so I'm just going to say create and notice it says something went wrong and it's quickly able to look that up and tell us, and we can see it here on the UI too. Username is already used. Notice it didn't say anything about the email address. Okay, let's change the username. And this time, let's um, change this email to one that's already in use. And so we click there and notice you'll see now it says the email is invalid, um, already in use. And so that's what the unique gets you. And so, but if I change those, notice, oh, I can easily create my user and no problem. So that's an example of where unique comes in handy. And you can see in this particular case, we would want this. We do not want to create users with the same username and thing. So here's the question. What if we, let's delete this record and we go back to our collection here and we remove this um, index, we remove this and we put it back the way pocket base added before where there weren't any constraints and we say create record. So we're trying to create the exact same user here. So we click create and it says, oh, username and in, uh, is invalid or already in use. And so we can see pocket base already is taking care of this for us. So we don't really have to do it. But I like the idea that uh, when you go to the collection, you can see it um, that uh, there is this constraint. Right. When we go here, we can see we don't know that pocket base is going to enforce that rule, but or that check. But if we create it here, it's obvious. All right. So another thing we can do is let's see, try this out with our cart items. So in cart items, we said that what we want to make sure is that people are not using the same item and cart multiple times. All right in that if you're going to add an item to a cart, well, you should just increase the quantity. So I already have headphones in this cart. So it would be wrong if I try to add another headphone to the same cart. So let's see. So if I do item, let's do headphone and select that. And then let's do quantity, let's say three. 
and then cart pick this cart so let's do this and then I create it and you can see I have two things I have headphones here three to in this cart and then I have the same thing at Ford one in this cart wouldn't it make sense to just increase the number of um, item in this because now if you think about it when you, you look at a list why should I have the exact same thing with different quantities if the price is the same so in this case we want to prevent this from happening so let's delete this oh this is the first record let's delete this guy and use a constraint to enforce that rule that you the combination of item and cart should not be should be unique and so let's create a new index are we going to say item and the cart should be unique okay that's all i care about i don't care about fast lookup really i'm just care at all that this combination is unique so i do that and let's save it and now if i go back and i say let's pick an item so headphone and let's pick a cart once again this guy and it doesn't really matter what number i choose here when i do create notice how it fails and it tells me that it must be unique and so if i really want to buy five more headphones what i should do is just simply go to this record and increase it by five make it six and that's totally fine and so your back end can take care of all this sort of logic right um, or you the way you display the shopping cart list to the user they should be able to just go and say oh i want to change this from six to three or something like that without having to add headphones again or even if they add headphones you be in the scene increment the number okay now that's our details application details okay so we're looking at unique but where would we want to be able to just add an index so let's look at our items one of the things that we like users to be able to do is to search for items so since they have to search often they might be searching on the name of something or on the description so why don't we um, create two indexes for name separately and description now of course we can create an index that combines the two but it might be that users don't always search both the name and the description they might search either one so let's just create two indexes so if they submit a query that includes the name only well it will use the index to find records using that index and if just submit a query with some string for the description well it will use that index and so once again we just go to the edit collection we go to new index we say let's create an index on the name and notice it gives this weird name and that's it it's not unique we don't want items to be unique we might have several items from different manufacturers different prices that might have the same name create another index and we want it to be on the description and again we don't care for the description to be unique we say um, we have two different indexes and we click save and that's it no i'm not going to be able to demonstrate to you here that having the index on name and description actually help us find records faster because we just have a few records. I mean, these are like five records. It wouldn't matter. If we had thousands or even millions of records, um, you would see um, the benefit of having an index. So unfortunately, you can't actually demonstrate that it's useful, but that's how you'd use and why you would use index and unique. So I hope that answered the question for the user and anyone else who might be wondering about how to use that. All right, that's it for this video. Um, thanks for sticking to the end. I appreciate you watching the video and coming back. If you are not a subscriber and you like the material, please consider subscribing. If you are a subscriber, thank you and um, thanks for returning. Uh, Mikhail, thank you for your Patreon support. If you'd like to support the channel, here are some ways in which you can do that. Otherwise, take care. See you in the next video. Bye.